Where would I be if you had not been by my side on the day the trouble came by? You saved me from all diseases. You never let me die. Oh Lord, it's by Your grace that I am saved in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, it's by Your grace that I am saved in Jesus' name.
Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening to you. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his glorious face to shine upon you in the name of our Lord, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to Healing School. Welcome to Healing School. Yours truly, good evening and God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's a joy. God bless you. Pastor Stanley, uh, Sister Eunice, Sister Memona, Sister Wandy, Sister Nancy, Mommy International, uh, Sister Kenny, Kulogo, Sister Kemi Tuwe Show. God bless every one of you. For the Evaristo, Sister Dominic, God bless every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And like I always say, let me check the other screen. Like I always say, Please, in case, just in case, all right? In case I didn't call your name, and uh, maybe if you even commented, kindly signify, let me call your name. Because everyone is important. God bless you and keep you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we just want to thank you. We praise you, we worship, and we adore you. We glorify you. We lift you up, O oh God. We honor you, O oh God. We exhort. We come reverently before your word today. And we receive function to function. We receive, O oh God. Kayama Ufra Kadanda Bashkatan Bari Bokosh Kosh 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 we also receive utterance that your word will be communicated simply with perfect understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my beloved Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, um, uh, Brother Kudus, God bless you. It is so well with you, in Jesus' name. Mr. Wande. Uh, thank you. God bless you. God keep you. I say a big amen to your prayer. Very big amen to your prayer. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise God. 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 Ah, healing, you see, healing is very, very important. If you have been in the news, you understand, if you have been listening to the news of late, you will know that which health, health issue is a very, very important issue. Health issue is important both for the rich and for the poor. Do you understand what I'm going to say? My prayers are with uh, His Royal Majesty, the King of England, King Charles the Third, and uh, his daughter-in-law, Kate, that God of heaven and the earth will perfect that which concerns them. Sickness is not good. Sickness is not good. And so please, how are you, Sister Moji? God bless you. It is well with you. And so please, if we are talking about the issue of health, let's not joke with it. Let's not joke with it. We, we thank God for the best your stand. We thank God because I know that their doctors are not sleeping. But that doesn't mean we should still not 
help them, support them with our prayers because they need our prayers. Amen and amen. There's a common saying that we care, but God heals. Man is a carer. God is the healer. Man is a carer. God is the healer. And the Lord God of heaven and the earth will perfect that which concerns your, your son, the king, and the, the daughter-in-law in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you know, when Princess Kate was talking, she said something that really, really touched me. It really, really touched me. Sister Margaret, good evening, ma. God bless. God bless you. She said, your stand is not even about her. She's standing with those. She's standing with those who are also going through that same pain. She's not just minding her business alone. She's standing with those. She's standing with those who are passing through the pain, the same pain. And so we should not wait until, oh, maybe there is sickness or whatever before we begin to, you know, now run around. No. Do you understand? We shouldn't. Sister Celia, good evening, ma. God bless you. We should not wait. We should not wait until, uh, until that happens. All right? Prepare. Get used to how to speak to your body when you have the strength. Practice it. Make, make it a habit. Because one day, hmm? not one day, every day, we, we need it every day. Because what we are going to share today, we open your eyes to some things about the issue of health. You understand? Hallelujah. Sister Uche Wanolu, God bless you. God bless the United States for your sake, in Jesus' name. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, before we continue, if um, this healing school has awakened your stand, has awakened your consciousness, your stand on the importance of div of health, health, whether it's divine, whether it is. Uh, natural or divine just uh, let me know if this has you know steered up a consciousness of taking your health seriously let me know just say just write that it has brother jones good evening and god bless you brother john O'Neill, god bless you sir let me know how this whether your stand how are you, Sister Lakwe? God bless you. Let me know how it has affected you. Because we should not joke with the issue of health. We should not joke with the issue of health. We are going to see some things here. We should not joke with the issue of health. The Bible says that a prudent man Foreseed the evil and hides himself. Do you know it's in the Bible? A prudent man foreseed the evil and hides himself. The Bible has told us that in the last days, you understand? The Bible has told us that in the last days, sicknesses and diseases of all kinds, unknown to medical science, will begin to spring up like no man business. He said there shall be pestilences, pestilences in diverse places, starvation, pestilences, diseases of all kinds. 
in diverse places. Brother Ian, God bless you. Amen. Sister Chiamaka, God bless you. Now, if the, if the Bible tells us that there will be hunger, there will be hunger in diverse places and there will be diseases in diverse places, what do you think a smart and a wise pastor should do? Hmm? If the Bible has forewarned us, you understand, a prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. If the Bible has told us that there will be hunger, hardship coming, severe hardship and sicknesses and diseases that has not been known to the world, Amen. What do you think? I'm asking you now, what do you think a smart pastor should do? Since there is a prophecy that things are going to be difficult. Please, another thing is that if you have not, um, if you have not liked or shared, kindly like, kindly share, let the house be full. All right, let the house be full in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I'm asking you a question. What do you think a smart pastor should do? If the Bible has already told us that there will be hunger, you understand that there will be so much hunger, there will be diseases everywhere. What do you think a smart pastor? Let me read. At, adopt the offensive stand to put back the pestilence from manifestation. Wonderful, brother Kudus. God bless you. So that means adopt the off offensive. Be on the offensive against sicknesses and diseases. Be on the offensive against poverty and shame. Let me read from, I'm still waiting. Let me read from yours truly. Educate the members on how to prepare against the evil day. Thank you, D. Excellent. You guys rock. Uh, Brother Kudus and yours. So that means a smart pastor. Amen. Okay. Sister Lakpe is saying, preach the word of God and empower the saints in that direction. Empower the saints. You see, don't uh, think, don't be a social media freak. You understand that you want everybody to like you. I want everybody to like me. So I will say things, you know, uh, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to say things that will make them like me. Oh, yes, just preach the word. Equip us with, the, with God's word, our armor. Thank you, Sister uh, Star One Day. God bless you for that. You understand, some people can't talk about healing now because we have hospitals. Some people cannot talk about prosperity now. You understand? Because they believe that all about prosperity is given. No, it's, it's not about prosperity is not given. All about prosperity, you understand, is first getting. Is first getting before giving. You do hear that? All about prosperity is how you can gather before you can distribute. Can I come again? Because they will always tell us, oh, give so that you can have. You stand, but I can show you where you can, you should get so that you can give. Let me see. Uh, prepare the congregation against the evil days with the word of God. Thank you, Sister uh, K. Touch. God bless you. Pray on a consistent basis with the words to foster. Uh, evolution machinations or what to forestall the evil coming. Sister Kevin Obadino, God bless you. Good evening. All right. Amen and amen. Praise, 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 praise God. Did you get that? Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Let me show you. 
because I showed you that I wanted to show you where they say you should get before you give. All right, Sister Bumi, how are you? Longest time. Let's check Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Just turn. So that means the pastor is not just to teach you on how to reap you. You start there to pray for you so that and to tell you that you should go for the best so that you can have, so that you always have to give. Let's see. And let's read it together. Let's read it together. And God bless you. If I can get 20 people that will say I've read it. But we have more than that. More than 20 people online already. Let him that still steal no more. So if you are stealing from people, stealing from your company, stealing from your boss, stealing, even stealing from the church. Do you know people steal from the church? Do you know people steal from the church? You see? He said, let him that still steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. The thing which is good, that he may have to give. You understand? That he may have to give. You know, sometimes they tell you that you should give so that you can have. The Bible says here that work with your hand so that you may have to give. All right? so that you may have to give. Praise God. So let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we are moving. Fifteen, sixteen. Well done. Well done. Let's go. Let's go. Did you get that? He said, work with your hand so that you can have something to give so that you can have something to give. So prosperity is not just about taking from you. Prosperity is praying that you will, your hand will be engaged, positively engaged. Amen and amen. 17. Your hands will be positively engaged and God of heaven and the earth will put money and food in your hand so that you can have to give to those who are in need. Is that okay? So, a, a wise pastor, you understand, a wise pastor, like I told you, a wise pastor should begin to teach hmm, on healing and how to take your healing. A wise pastor should, a smart pastor should not joke with the issue of health. The Bible says there shall be pestilences. Matthew chapter 24, there shall be pestilences. Earthquakes, pestilences in diverse places. Sister Jane, good evening. God bless you. Do you understand? The Bible has for wonders. So that means we have to be praying against danger, against e health. You understand? Against poverty. Because it will be prevalent in the last days. And if we don't checkmate that, what will happen? Not if we make heaven, huh? not if we make heaven. So we should better begin to develop our faith. Hmm? Let us begin to develop our faith on how we can begin to develop our faith on how we can begin to receive from God. Because if we don't know how to receive from God, you will be tempted, Sister Grace Adjula, good evening. God bless you. You will be tempted to do what you are not supposed to do. Another good scripture. So that whenever I'm leading prayer. Yes, joy and ever. God bless you. So that whenever I'm leading prayer, you can join me forcefully in leading prayer. All right? You see, if you're, if you're praying about money and somebody is indifferent, when he's in need, don't give him. You understand? Don't give him. You understand? Because some people, you'll be praying and they will be killing your spirit. You understand? As if it's not important. When somebody is praying, say a big amen. You open your mouth and say amen. You understand? To encourage the person to pray more, not to kill the spirit of that person. If we don't believe in the prayer for prosperity, when you are in need, you shouldn't 
go and meet somebody who prayed his lungs out to get it. Just keep quiet and enjoy your poverty. Keep quiet and enjoy your poverty. But I hear me good evening, sir. God bless you. Let me show you something here. Psalm 125, verse 3. Psalm 125, verse number 3. Let's see. Let's read. Keep sharing. Keep sharing if you have not shared. Keep sharing if you have not shared. Keep liking if you have not liked. God bless you. Greetings from Pastor Stanley. Anyway, he will join us soon. Are we here? Psalm 125, verse number three. Let's project it. Can I also, can I get your stand? Can I get 20 people that will read this also? And God bless you as we do so. He said, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Let the righteous put forth his hand into hand unto iniquity. Do you know what? What is the lot of the righteous? I call it the heritage of the righteous. What is the lot of the righteous? Health, prosperity, favor, a good life. So let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Keep reading, keep reading. 13. God bless you. I like this group. God bless you. God honor you. Read. God bless you. We are here for Bible study. God bless you. It is so well with you. I'm excited that you are reading it. So that when you read it and I'm explaining, you know what I'm explaining. God will honor you. I'm not overbordering you. You understand? I'm not overbordering you. You understand? I like to teach. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like why you biri biri. I don't like it. Your son, why you be repeat? You know, I said it now. I said, somebody is opening the Bible. People are not reading. Your son. Another person is teaching the Bible. They say, oh, he's a fake prophet. He's a deceiver. Okay, somebody says, read it so that if you don't agree with me, ask me. Some are not reading. Do you like error? God bless you all. I celebrate you all, and I mean it from the depth of my I'm so excited. You know what? Things like this begin to happen. You, there's an anointing. There's a, there's a strong anointing to, to teach. Amen and amen. There's a strong anointing to teach. Did you see what he said? Now, I have another question to ask you. Can you tell me some of the lots of the righteous? The lot of the righteous. You know what it is? Your lot. Your stand, your lot. Your stand. Let me tell you the lot there. Your, what do you think is the lot of the righteous? Can you mention one of the things that you can call the lot of your righteous? What is your lot in life? Amen and amen. I want to I want to hear from you. What do you say? Say for the rod of the wicked, your portion. That's right. Yeah, your portion, good health. Eternal life, divine health. Continue to continue to mention. Good health. Thank you, Sister Wande. Uh, Sister Bemuna. Yeah, your portion. Prosperity. Continue. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Success. Abundant life. Good health and prosperity. Amen. Peace. Prosperity. Good health. Amen. Long life. Joy. Advancement. Good health, peace, joy, and wealth, prosperity, favor, mercy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Protection. Thank you. Protection, preservation, rest. Hallelujah. Peace, progress, honor. Wow. Peaceful marriage. <laughs> I like that, Sister Nancy. Good. Peaceful marriage. Joyful marriage. Fruitful marriage. Fruitfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Favor. Longevity. Goodness. 
mercy. Okay, did you see that? Abundant life, preservation, happiness. Hallelujah. Okay, did you see? Did you see? Okay, now, for the rod of the wicked, the rod there signifies authority. Did you see? Authority, you know, like staff of office, excellence, peace, joy, prosperity. Did you see? Did you see the word rod there? The rod, the authority of the wicked shall not rest upon what is yours. Sustainability. You understand? Okay, now, take for instance, somebody, the, the, the devil moves your manager against you and will not get you promoted. And you will not get promoted. First year, second year, third year. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? The righteous will put his hand upon unto iniquity. You will go and start looking for help where there is no help. He said, lest the righteous, lest the righteous put forth his hand unto iniquity. You will now begin to visit harbor homes. Did you get that? For the road of the wicked shall not. So if we are praying, if we are praying against satanic attack, open your mouth and pray. Because if we don't pray, that may ultimately land you, your prayerlessness and indifference may ultimately land you in hell. Why did I say so? The rod of the wicked is resting upon your lot. They are praying to remove that authority, to break that power. You are not, you, it doesn't bother you. Now they bring cult, that you should join this cult, you should join that cult. And you joyfully join because you want to advance. Do you understand? You joyfully join because you want to advance. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you, did you get what I'm trying to say? For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth his hand unto iniquity. Do you know that uh, before you know it, you begin to dip your hand into things you should not dip your hand in? And is it not happening to pastors? Tell me, is it not happening to pastors? Are pastors not dipping their hands into things now? Because the rod of the wicked kept the church from growing, kept the money from coming. Your stand. Somebody will just say, how, how long will you wait? How long will you sit with uh, where two or three are gathered? Huh? How long? How many years? Your, your church is how many years? And you are still with uh, where two or three are gathered. Now you know, if you need help, come. You see, we should not pretend, if you are listening to me, don't, don't let us, we are adults. Am I making sense? Or you think I'm just making up things? Do you think I'm making sense? Or I'm just making up things? How many altars now? How many altars can you really call the altar of God? How many altars now can you really call the altar of God? Where they, they don't burn incense or bury things on those altars? Your turn. Do you know how many altars they bury things? They bury things. They bury things on those altars. And be careful who puts your his hand on your head. You start be careful who puts his hand on your head. Are you getting my point? If we don't trust anybody, just if you want, just you know karate now, just block. Don't let anybody put just anybody you don't trust put his hand on your head. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you get that? 
for the rod of the wicked that means the authority of the wicked your boss may frustrate you and he will just place his rod of wickedness his rod of wickedness upon your promotion upon your favor upon your stay do you know that yes they can even put it upon your stay your immigration stay that if we don't join this, if we don't join this court, if we don't join this, if we don't join that, you cannot make a headway in life. And so many people are succumbing now. Young, young people are joining court. They are joining court now. They want to blow. They want to blow. They are, they are promoted. They are promoted. They are sponsored. But here's the good news. The Bible tells us, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What? Everything is transient. That big car, that big house, one day you will die and leave everything to now face your maker. Why do we allow earthly things, material things, to deceive us? Go get it God's way, and you will have peace. Get it God's way, and you will have peace. You see, you see let me tell you, Satan is a very crafty person. Whatever Satan gives you today, he's going to take back from you. You stand uncountable times. Satan. He's a negotiator. He's a, he's a deep negotiator. You think you can, you, you can deceive Satan? He is the deceiver. You can't deceive him. He's the deceiver. You can't deceive him. He is the deceiver. Satan fried to do for you. Eh? You don't know it will run your belly. Your belly later. It is a deceiver. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Do you understand? For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. I was talking to somebody. Listen very, very well. So that you know how some of these things work. A man wanted to help a particular person for several years. Your stand, the person will go and see this man. They will eat, they will drink, not alcohol, though. They will eat and drink. This man will, but the man never gave, never helped this man. This man, you know, was in dire need. They will eat. The man, Stinkingly rich, yes, if that is permitted. So rich, maybe not stinking, so rich. But they will not help this man. This man kept going first year, second year, and maybe even more. You know what somebody told this man? You understand? He said, the man wants to frustrate you. So that after frustrating you, <laughs> Amen. Are you getting my point? This man wants to frustrate you so that after frustrating you, you understand, you will now come to terms <laughs> with him. That you understand, he wants to, he, he probably wants to initiate you. He probably wants to initiate you, and you're not playing game. You're not playing game. You understand? So he has done something, and so he's the one that will go to hell, Lavi. Why he uses a uh, uh, why you now? Why you now? Do you understand? He's the one to go to hell. Is the one to go to hell? Why? He never helped this man. He never. Are you getting my point? He never helped this man. He will cook the best food, do everything, but to help this man, he never did. And somebody now came and told him that, you see, this man wants to frustrate you. He wants you to play game. Can't you get the body language? Can't you get the body language? And so what are we saying today? 
What are we saying? Let me read it again. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. You, you have your lot. I call it the heritage of the righteous. You know, I've taught on that. Your stand. I taught years ago on the heritage of the righteous. You stand. The rod there signifies authority. Somebody, a wicked man, wants to use his authority. You stand to hold you. To make sure things don't move for you. To frustrate you. The rod of the wicked resting upon your lot. You stand. There is what they call in Africa. In Africa. Your son, uh, uh, for the Yorubas, for those who are Yoruba speaking, they say, Mugbesele. That means, you know, somebody can see your wife. Now, in those days, though, I don't know whether it's obtainable these days, you know, a king, a powerful king can just say, oh, I put my leg on your wife. That means I'm snatching her. I'm taking, forcefully taking this wife from you. And you have no right. Because others are called kabiosi, that means unquestionable. You can't question them. And that's exactly what they are saying in Psalm 125, verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Because if you allow it to rest without you deploying your own authority, your own authority, you have a rod too. <laughs> it is the battle of rods. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. You have a road to Isaiah 11. And Jesus is your road that shall come forth from the stem of Jesse. Amen. You have a road too. You are not roadless. Remember that Moses went back to Egypt with the road, a type of Christ and his authority. Do you understand? And when he came, you know, the magicians presented their own roads too. You understand? The magician presented their own rods too. You cannot be rodless. You can't be rodless. You can't be rodless. You must carry your rod. The magician presented. You understand? The magicians too presented their rods. But one rod swallowed up the other. Hallelujah. You understand? One rod swallowed up the other. One rod swallowed up the other. Did you hear what they said? For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon your lot. You see, you cannot keep quiet and allow your stand. You cannot keep quiet and allow the rod of the wicked to rest. Why your rod? You understand? Why you? Why your rod is not doing anything? God did not leave you rodless. It's not only the wicked that have rods. You have rod. You have your own rod. To the righteous, have his own rod too. Amen and amen. The righteous has his own, they have their own rods too. And this rod is Jesus. He said, carry with you rod wherewith thou shalt do sign. When you take Jesus along with you, amen, which is the word of God, amen and amen. In your heart, then on your lips, faith filled words, faith filled words, faith filled words of power, faith filled words of power. We are going to just exercise. Are you ready now? Are you ready? We're going to exercise. We're going to exercise our authority now. Say after me, Heavenly Father. Every rod of the wicked resting upon any area of my life, known and unknown to me. In the name of Jesus, I demand, let that rod be burnt to ashes. Let that rod be taken off and burnt to ashes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory be to God. You know, let me give you an example of that manifestation. One of our church bosses, one of our church bosses have no, if you notice, a particular bus that runs the Kambawe bus, the Kambawe bus has not been flying now for about three weeks because of British bureaucracy. 
uh, root tax or no root tax, we will write email. We want nothing was nothing is wrong with the boss. We will write email here, email there, email there. First week, nothing. Second week, and I think maybe the third week. Now, okay, the, you are using boss to convey to convey people to church. All right, it's code. It's cold, and that's a way of motivating people to come to church. And look at the distance between Camberwell and Bromley. Now, because of that, now some people have not the maybe some of the elderly have not been able to come to church. We had to, I had to react. On Sunday morning, it was not done. I laid my hands and I said, You boss. You are going back in the name of Jesus Christ this Sunday. All of a sudden, uh, I found out that yesterday, Monday, we didn't do anything. Tuesday, ah. in the middle of the night, I told my wife, I said, come, we cannot continue like this. And I demanded that the issue must be resolved today. This is a satanic ploy. The rod of the wicked, the rod of negligence. Somebody is not reading. Just type, just give us the code. Then we clear our road tax and be on the road. We don't want to enter the road without road tax and be fined. To the glory of God, we made a decree. In the name of Jesus Christ, we made a decree that the issue must be resolved today. And can I tell you? The issue was resolved today. Your stand. The, 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 the issue was resolved today. We got it from the post. We've been cleared. Hallelujah. Why? Because anger. Yes, I got angry in the spirit. I got angry overnight in the middle of the night. Satan, take your filthy hands. I bind you and I curse you. Loose your hold. Over this, go lose your hold in the name of, and I demand that it has to be done today in the name of Jesus. And I want to announce to Tambawe people, your stand because now Easter is coming. Okay, look at our counselor, our, our counselor now. Probably, maybe the number of people she will have brought. Maybe many more people to church, you know, for our 60th. We didn't know. Amen and amen. Bottom line is that don't allow the rod of the wicked to rest upon your lot. Your lot is healing. Your lot is health. Health is your lot in God. It's your heritage. It's your right. It's the children's meat. Is the children's bread. And don't allow Satan your stand. Satan will use, among several things, two things. Two things to keep you away from your health. One, ignorance. Two, passivity. You may be passive, like a dasker, indifferent to what can kill you. To what can kill you. Ignorance. Wrong doctrine. Then passivity in the uses of your authority, your stand. Authority is not given to you, has not been given to you by God for you, your stand to party with is to walk. God has given you that authority for you to walk. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen and amen. Now, our words, because I'll keep saying it, our words, your stand, our words matter a lot in the issue of health. Talking sickness, we build sickness in your system. Talking health, we boost your immunity against diseases and sicknesses. Have we ever had 
God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. There are cases in which God may do it. All right. There are cases in which, yeah, God will do it. Take for instance, in Saint, uh, in um, there, there was a time in Israel of old, in John chapter five one to four, there was a pool of Bethesda that was tiered at a particular time of the season in the year, and whoever first dived in, whoever was first to dive in, was healed of any disease any whoever whether man or woman whoever tall or short whoever black or white whoever illiterate or literate or illiterate whoever rich or poor do you understand that was we call that divine sovereignty of god the divine sovereignty of god and i have a question now where is that pool today where is that pool today? That is one. Then why would God choose just to heal one person, the first to dive in? And the Bible said there were a lot of impotent folks there. But God would just choose to heal one person. Do you know that if we are waiting for that pool, people will be dying in mass? Because you you. You know, a lot of us think, oh, it's a miracle pool, it's a miracle pool. Wow, miracle pool. A miracle pool that we only solve one man's problem amongst thousands. I don't, I don't think that's the best method. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> Do you think that's the best method? Talk to me. For an angel went down at the certain season in the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease. So if you are coming to church, just even check our church. If you are coming to church and God can only meet the need of one person, when will it be your turn? <laughs> Just one person. Where will it be your turn? And now, God was not using, listen to me, God was not using the severity of the crisis, your time, was not using the severity of the crisis of the people to know who first jumps in. And let me tell you, the more severe, the more unlikely. Did you get that? The more severe your case, the more unlikely you are getting, because you won't have strength. It is those with uh, minor leg pain that dive in. You are the caron. You do get that. The more severe your problem, the more helpless you are, the more unlikely you will get there. Look at that man that was there 30 and 8 years, 38 years. Who had you know, an issue of 38 years, no man to push him in. But we want to teach you a method of healing that is beyond the steering of the pool. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Glory be to God in the highest. You know, there was a time Peter walked on water too because in matthew 14 25 to 31 there was a time that you know jesus walked on water and peter said oh if you are the one lord tell me to tell me to come and peter began to walk on water after a time he saw the wind was boisterous and he began to sing for fear all right we're talking about god's divine sovereignty he began to sing for fear. And Jesus said, Thou of little faith. Jesus said, Thou of little faith. And it helped him from sinking. That was God's divine sovereignty. You understand? That was God's divine sovereignty. 
and now for God's divine sovereign. But we want to point you to uh, something that is, um, um, and, and, and again, there was a time uh, Jesus was sleeping on the boat, you stand, and the, 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 the wind reacted. The wind, you stand, the wind reacted contrary. They woke Jesus up and they rebooked it. Now, it is not every time you will see physical Jesus to wake him up. So now, if we can't see Jesus, if we can't see Jesus on the same boat, what is the way out? If you can't see Jesus physically, you're starting with you, sinking in a notion, what is the way out? Let me hear from you. What do you think we should now look to? Because there are some people now that just believe in their own method. If God wants me healed, I'll be healed. If God wants me to die, I will, I will die. You will die, you. You will die. It is to you according to your faith. It is not to you according to God's determination. God is already determined enough to allow his son to die on the cross of Calvary. And by his stripes, your healing has become a provision. Healing is no longer promissory. Healing is a provision. Are you getting my point? Healing has been provided. It has moved from being a promise to being a provision. It's a provision because it is already given. Amen. It is already given. First Peter 2.24, by the stripes of Jesus, you've been made whole already. Your stand is not debatable. You have been made whole. But I feel sick. Yes, you take the truth of God's word to so stamp out the lie of the devil out of your body. Your stand. Hallelujah. You take the truth of God's word. Who, that's why the Bible says in Isaiah 53 from verse number one, whose report are you going to believe? Is it the report of your feeling? Or the report of his healing. Is he your feeling? Are you going to believe your feeling? Your stand? Or you believe his word? His word. Remember, the one who told you that you've been healed already can never lie. Your stand? The Bible tells us that the strength of Israel will never lie. God can never lie. Your stand? God cannot lie. So if God cannot lie, since someone or something is lying, God cannot lie. Amen. Numbers 20, uh, 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said and as he not done it. As he spoken and as he not made it good. You understand? God is not a man to lie. I think for Samuel, is it 15, 29? The strength of Israel will never lie. God cannot lie. So something definitely is lying, but not God. Excuse God out of it. It's not God. It is not God. God is not a liar. Maybe the situation is lying. And when the situation hears the truth, the situation will align with the truth. Amen and amen. Do you know that the situation we align with the truth? Say it if you are listening to me. My situation. In the name of Jesus, begin to align with the truth of God's word concerning you. Say it again. My situation. Your stand. You can mention the specific. Your stand. You can mention the specific. That this sickness in my body, this growth, listen to me. You will align with the truth of God's word. They play. <laughs> I like that word. They play. You, will align, you must align. You must align. God's word will straighten you out. God's word will straighten you out. Say a big amen. God's word will straighten you out. God's word will straighten you out. Hallelujah. Now, I have a question. Healing, you know, sometimes, listen to me, sometimes, hmm? healing can be by virtue of the anointing. You understand? You know, we we have the gift, the gift, the gift of healings, different kinds of healings, emotional, physical. 
and healing can be wrought, you stand by the provocation or the stirring up of a gift of healing. In which case, you stand, the Lord can just tell you, do something, do something, do this, do this, and it will disappear. But when, listen, when the healing gift of God does not manifest, where do you turn to? Where do you turn to? If it doesn't manifest, what do you turn to? Somebody, one day I was, I saw a vision of one of our pastors. He went to the hospital and they had us enlarged. You understand? There was an enlargement. What you read about seven, uh, seven was reading 14. It was threatening. Your time. It was so threatening. He was so afraid. He was so afraid. So afraid. Your stand. He was he, he was so afraid. And he now prayed according to him. He said, Lord, if you will help me, tell my pastor. Because he was so down. He was so down. Please tell my pastor. Then I will know. Your stand that then I will know that I will survive this. He prayed the prayer. I came to church and God opened my eyes. I didn't even know. He prayed the prayer. And I got to the office. Pastor Stanley was there also. And I picked, I said, I picked a piece of paper and I drew the hat. <laughs> and I drew the hat and I drew an attachment. I said, This was what I saw. This was what I saw today before coming to church. He felt like fainting. He shouted, Yay! God. And I said, What does it mean? He said, I know that God answers prayer, but so fast, so fast. The pastor, I went to the hospital. What should you read? Seven. My own read 14. It's life threatening. I need a miracle. There's an enlightenment of the heart. But you know that in that vision, God showed me what to do. <laughs> God showed me what to do. You know, you would have thought that God would tell you that lay hands on the chest. No. God didn't tell me to lay my hand on the heart, on the chest where the heart is. No. God said, put your, your hands, your fingers in his ears and call it out. And that was exactly what I did because I already saw what I should do. In that vision. So and I told him I'm preparing for London Water Life Conference. I want the anointment to be so strong. At the conference, I'm going to call you under a very strong anointing. And then I'll pray for you. So I called him out. I called him out. Put my hand. It's on video. Even though you guys didn't know. You know why I had to call him out. But I'm now sharing the testimony because it has now become good news. I put my hand and I commanded whatever is not of God, everything affecting your heart, out. In the name of Jesus, I curse you. I rebook you. Out. Be out forever. And be gone. Lo and behold, he went back to the hospital to test. Guess what happened? Guess the miracle to the glory, praise, majesty, and honor of the name of our God alone. It was the thing shrank and read it from 14 crashed to eight. Then peace came. Peace came. Glory to God in the highest. Peace came. Joy came. Hope came. Crash to eight. Read eight. After the prayer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But I have this thing to say. What if. What if. Listen to me. Just what if. Just what if. Listen. Just what if. You don't see any vision. If there is no vision. What if there is no vision. Just what if there's no vision? That's one. What will happen? 
Where do you turn to? Some of a lot of you got the you got the answer. All right. You turn to the word. You turn to the word. The word is the answer. The word of God is the answer. When you stand, when there is no specific word from God, when there is no instruction from God, you stand, when there is no instruction from God, when the healing gift is not in operation, God's word will always work wonder. God's word, you stand on the word of God. And how do you stand on the word of God? Psalm 107 verse 20. Let's see. He sent his word. His word healed them. His word delivered them from all their destruction. Aren't you happy? Aren't you happy? This word is Jesus. Aren't you happy? He sent his word. And it healed them. He sent his word. Psalm 107. So, to ignore the word is to ignore your stand, your helper. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word. And I want to give God all the glory, praise, majesty, your stand. I want to give God all the glory, praise, majesty, and honor. In our church, at least, I counted the other time to the glory of God, to the praise and majesty of the name of our God. We have about four or five cancer survivors. You understand? Some, there was even a time I went to greet somebody with Brother Ian. And I know how, you know, I have to call Brother Ian so that I won't call my wife in all cases. I know how. You know how much your stand, how touched Brother Ian was that day when we left the place. It was almost a hopeless case. Almost a hopeless case. This person was so frail, you know, with chemotherapy, was so frail. Your stand, they've given her a short time to live. But we kept pumping the word. We kept pumping the word. We kept pumping the word. Thank you, everyone. We kept pumping the word. Okay, Chanda Margaret, please, man of God, pray for me. I've been diagnosed with blood pressure. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I demand right now, let your blood pressure be regulated now chanda margaret in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ let whatever is causing that you know abnormal blood pressure be taken care of now in the name of jesus father you are divine we are your branch the same the same blood flows through us and it should be under the same pressure <laughs> jesus can never suffer high blood pressure jesus can never suffer high blood pressure in the name of jesus christ let your blood pressure be normal right now in the mighty name of jesus let the mighty hand of god touch you now in jesus name be healed be delivered and if it has any demonic undertone, I, I take authority over that devil. I bind you. I break your hold. I demand that you be gone never to return there again. In Jesus' mighty name. I want Chanda, Margaret Chanda, to begin to say, by the stripes of Jesus, I've been made whole. Thank you, Jesus. You have to say something. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Say it on countable times. Say it on countable times. Amen and amen. I, I, I know of a case of somebody who has sickle cell anemia. I've shared it before. Sickle cell anemia. Your son and then 
we we were holding a meeting and this lady just decided to mess the whole meeting up deliberately mess it up to create an attention so that she could be her case could be attended to she was just weeping and you understand she was just weeping and by the time i asked her what was wrong she said she sickle cell she may die she may die yeah yes chanda margaret keeps saying it thank you jesus say it say it. dance rock and dance in your dance around and we keep telling jesus keep thanking god you understand let healing be on your lips and it will manifest in your life so this lady kept weeping and kept weeping and kept weeping you understand that was why i said it's the same the same blood flows through us jesus is divine we are his branches so the same blood should flow in trees they call it sap the same sap and it should be under the same pressure isn't it so when this lady began to weep and began to weep uncontrollably i, I asked them to ask her what was the matter and they told me that she has sickle cell and you know by the grace of god i am a samis i am a samis and sometimes god you know gives us a song in the night so as i said watch as i as i said looking at her the lost stirred up this song and i'm going to sing that song and as many of you your stand uh, that has anything to do with blood pressure or sickle cell, anything to do with blood disease, God is going to cleanse you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I looked at her, and this song just fired in my spirit. He is the vine. We are his branches. Jesus is the vine. I am his branch. The same blood flows through us. The same blood flows through us. The same blood flows through us. I am whole. Then I pointed to her, lady, the same blood flows through us. The same blood flows through you and Jesus. The same blood flows through you. You are whole. The same blood flows through us. The same blood flows through us. The same blood flows to us. I am whole. I began to sing. I told them in that meeting, let's sing it. We sang it. And I said, I wanted to go to the hospital now and go and test your genotype. You're no longer sickle cell. Go and check. Go and check. Because God yeah. has given you a song in the night. Go and check. Well, the bottom line is this. I traveled to Nigeria years after. And I went to my friend's house. You understand? And my friend told me, brought a lady. He said, do you remember this lady? I said, I, I, I can't remember. I don't know her. He said, she was the lady you prayed for. Who used to have crisis. That do you know that ever since that day, Except for once, the day she overworked herself, she has never suffered crisis anymore. Sickle cell crisis anymore. That was their testimony. They are alive to testify. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So be healed. Be healed. 
Now, I, 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 let, think of this. Think of this. If we take water from the Atlantic Ocean, your stand and test the property. If we take a little water from the Atlantic Ocean and test the property, all right? It should be the same thing with the rest of the water. If we take water from the Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean, you test them, they will give different properties. So if they take, if you are part of the body of Christ, you understand the large body of Christ, Jesus being the head, he should reflect his property. And by the grace of God, I pray with this understanding, we will take hold of our healing. Say amen to that. There's something you have to say. You have to keep saying. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word. Amen. Let's see. I like I like this uh, Chanda Margaret. That's how you win. She has typed this several times now. That's how we, that's how you win. Let's see. We you know, let's see this. Uh Proverbs 18:21. Let's see. Let's see something there. Proverbs 18:21. Amen. Because I want you to I want to show you three things, a few things, then we call it today. Amen. Who has been blessed today? Who, who has been blessed? The word of God, you know, is the answer. He sent each word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. So even though many are the afflictions of the righteous, the Lord delivered them all. You understand, if you are not the righteous giving, you understand, if you are not the righteous giving to the word, <laughs> you may not be delivered though. Because precept must be upon precept here, a little, there, a little. Now let's go to Proverbs 18.21. You understand, Proverbs 18.21. God bless you. Oh, Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Words are seed. You understand? And these seeds produce fruit. Words are seeds. Write it down. Words are seeds. Just write that because I want to show you something. Words are seeds. Words are seeds. You understand? When you plant them, they produce fruit. Words are seeds. You plant words are seeds. Words are seeds. So they can grow. Words are seeds. Words are seeds. Words are seeds. Words are seeds. It they can be planted. They can be watered. Words are seeds. Did you see what he said? They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. When you plant mango seed, you can take mango fruit. When you plant the seed of health, you will eat the fruit of health. Did you get that? You plant the seed of health, you eat the fruit of health. Words are seeds. Talking about the parable of the sower, let's check. I will get 20 people now that the house is full. I will want 25 people. Am I not audacious to, to say I've read it? Mark 14, Mark 414. Let's check Mark 414. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse number 14. Let's check. Because death and life are in the now. Let's see it. Who has read? <laughs> Let's see. All right. The sower, sower, the word. 
The sewer sewer the word. The sewer sewer the word. So if somebody is, if you are watching as a group, ask your partner there. It's not to quarry. Just ask your partner, what words are you sowing? The sower sowed the word. When Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower, he was not talking about mango. He was not talking about cashew. He was not talking about yam. He was not talking about cocoa yam. The sower sowed the word. The sower sowed the word. The sower sowed the word. You must be a planter of the word. The sower sowed the word. The sower sowed the word. Please read it. Read it. The sower sowed the word. And your tongue produces words. Let me tell you, there is no word that comes out of your mouth that is not going into one soil or the other to grow. So if you notice, if you know this, you have to be careful what you say. Every word that comes out of your mouth, all right? Every word that comes out of your mouth is a seed. You are sowing it into something and it will grow. And the Bible tells us that it can either bring you death or life. Now let's now say it can bring you sickness or health. It can bring you favor or trouble. It can bring you honor or shame. It can bring you liberty or bondage. It can bring you freedom or bondage. Did you, did you see that? The sower sowed the word. The sower sowed the word. The sower sowed the word. What word are you speaking into your body? Do you speak to your body? If you can speak to mountains, why can't you speak to your body? Why can't you speak to your body? Now let's check James chapter 3 verse 2. James 3 2 tells us that your words can bridle your whole body. Your words can control your body. Your words can control your body. I'm always tired. I'm always tired. You will be tired. You will be getting weaker and weaker. My problem is faith. You understand? Pastor, I don't have faith. When you begin to say you don't have faith, then doubt will begin to grow, rise up in you like a giant. You have faith. Romans 12, 3 tells us that we've been given the measure of faith. You have faith. You have faith. It is just that you have not developed your faith. Every Christian has faith. Okay, now, to tell you that you have faith, do you check how strong your chair is before sitting on it? You sit on your chair by faith. You drive your car by faith. Is that not so? You rise up every morning, believing that your legs can carry you by faith. <laughs> you open your eyes, believing you will see by faith. We, you see, we exercise faith every day, only that we are not conscious of the fact that we are, you're only that we are not. Okay, this chair, do you check the chair? Do you check how strong your chair is before sitting? Now, let me check. Let me check. Maybe. You just sit down by faith. Okay, at the traffic light, when the traffic light passes you, do you know that you cross by faith, believing that one person will not be not enough to come and clear you? We all ask, you know, anytime I'm, I'm, I'm walking, you know, I'm driving and I get to the traffic light and they pass us. You just move by faith, believing nobody will run and that every other person will have to stand. You believe that they are normal. You know, is it not by faith you believe that this every other driver is normal at the traffic point? Huh? It's by faith. A trailer is standing, coming, because the, the light is green. You... The light is green. You just believe that that driver is a normal person. You drive across. And you say you don't have faith. You have faith. You understand. You have faith. You just chose not to develop that faith in God. Pro, uh, James chapter 3 verse 2. James 3 2. James 3 2. James 3 2. Koreana mama. Tan tan brum bum bum brum bum to high. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle his whole body. 
you can control your body. So now, I want you to speak to your body. Say, my body, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, you are healthy. You are healthy. You are full of life. The finished work of Jesus, health-wise, is evident in you. In the name of Jesus, my body be regulated by the healing grace of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, my body, you are not weak. You are not sick. My body, listen to me. You are well. Everything is working well in you. My body, listen to me. Greater is Jesus in you than any sickness in the world, than any disease in the world. In the name of Jesus, my body, in the name of Jesus, you are strong. You are strong. Your immunity against sicknesses and diseases is second to none because of the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, my body, listen to me. You, you house the power that raised Jesus from the dead. You cannot suffer decay. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is working in you. Is working in you is quickening every organ to function optimally in the name of jesus i have vision 2020 my pancreas is working well all the cells of my body are alive and well there's no blood clot anywhere there's no blood clot anywhere the heat of the holy spirit melts away every blood clot in the name of Jesus, there is no cancer anywhere because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is not the temple of cancer and cannot be the temple of cancer in the name of Jesus. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My sugar level is normal. My cholesterol level is normal. In the name of Jesus, my blood pressure is perfect. In the name of Jesus, my vision is perfect. My hearing is perfect. In the name of Jesus, I am healthy. I am full of life. I am strong. I am well. In the name of Jesus, Jesus did not die in vain in my life. Jesus was not beaten in vain in my life. Jesus didn't die in vain. Jesus didn't suffer in vain. I am a beneficiary of all that Jesus went through. In the name of Jesus, I am a beneficiary. I am a beneficiary of the finished work of Jesus. I am a beneficiary. I am full of life. 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 Everything is working well for me. In the name of Jesus, I am full of life. I am healthy. I am healthy. In the name of Jesus, I'm healthy. In the name of Jesus, I am healthy. In the name of Jesus, arthritis, you have no power over me. Leukemia, you have no power over me. Glaucoma. You have no power. Lupus, you have no power. Cancer, you have no power over me. Diabetes, you have no power over me. In the name of Jesus, your power is broken. Goiter, you are cursed. Die. In the name of Jesus, fibro to my curse you. Die. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Koriyama Babayan Tahaya. Gum disease, you are cursed. You are cursed. In the name of Jesus, you are cursed. Waste pain, I curse you. Every form of oppression, I curse you in the name of Jesus. Obesity, give way. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
la hypertension i take authority over you i bind you i curse you i break your hold over my life in the name of our lord jesus eating disorder sleep disorder in irritable birth syndrome i curse you in the name of the lord i rebook you i rebook you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i regulate every enlarged prostrate be normal in the name of jesus be normal be normal by the authority and the power of the holy spirit be normal whatever is not of god in my system i command you now you must obey me you must obey me i'm a man under authority even the authority of christ you must obey me in the name of jesus one two three out be gone out in the name of jesus be gone forever be gone forever and ever be gone by the authority of god be gone in jesus name be gone in jesus name i'm full of life kayana buzahai i do a santo i do a sanota broka puka libar katao di mahachanda kuria bakalata Wa 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 ya sambra kali bragadata libro koko di bragadanda libaha. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible tells us that your your tongue can control your whole body. Stop talking weakness, because the more you talk weakness, the weaker you become. You'll be getting weaker and weaker as you talk weaker and weaker. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Don't talk weakness. Some of us talk weakness to avoid work. Just stand. Don't talk weakness. I like that. Shanda Margaret, God bless you. Who invited you? And which country are you watching from? Let me know. I like how you said I'm full of life. Talk strength. Talk strength, talk victory. Say, it, I am more than a conqueror. <laughs> I am more than a conqueror. You know what a more than a conqueror is? Let me give you an example of more than a conqueror. A more than a conqueror is somebody who lives in health. You know, healing shows that, you know, if somebody is healed, that means you can be sick. That's why you can be healed. But somebody who lives in health is more than a conqueror. It's more than somebody who has conquered sickness. Amen and amen. Okay, from Lusaka, Zambia. God bless you. Chanda Margaret, God bless you. God bless you. Who invited you or you just stumbled into it? Did you just stumble? I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against you? Now, the final question. Is God for you? If God for you. If God is for you, because God is for you through Jesus. All right? Through Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. If God is for you, nobody can successfully be against you. It's not that nobody can be against you. You know, I've corrected it. Nobody can successfully be against you because people are against us just because we belong to God, but they will not succeed. Do you understand? If God be for us, no one can successfully be against us against us against us i'm going to show you two scriptures i know my time is gone romans 10 10. confession is made unto salvation you believe in your heart that god has healed you you confess with your mouth Oh, wow, nobody invited you. God brought you here. God, God brought you here. We are here, uh, Chanda Margaret. We are here. 
every, I don't know the time in, um, I don't know the time in Zambia now, but we are here every, every Wednesday, same time, in case you want to join and in case you want to invite people. Glory be to God in the highest, Father. Thank you, Father. For with the heart man believeth unto health. Amen. <laughs> Do you know you can believe in your heart that by the stripes of Jesus have been made whole? And with the mouth, confession is made unto healing. Confession is made unto. Your confession is made, whatever you believe in your heart, you say it to, to enjoy it. That salvation means to enjoy it. You, say, you believe in your heart, you say it to enjoy it. You say it to experience it. You say it. You say it to enjoy it. You say it to experience it. Amen. Amen. With the heart, man believe it. With the heart, man believe it. With the tongue, confession is made. Your stand. With the mouth, confession is made unto prosperity. Confession is made unto favor. Confession is made unto longevity. You must say something. You must say something. Because if you are not saying anything, you are not committing God. You must say something. If not, you are not committing God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We also meet in the morning. I don't know the time in Zambia, but we also meet. You can check every morning. We do our, what we call DDHH, the, the extension of every morning we are here, Chanda. Every morning we, we are here every morning except weekend. We do our morning devotion from 6 o'clock UK time. 6 o'clock UK time. You can, please just subscribe. Subscribe on our YouTube. Kindly sub subscribe and you will receive an alert anytime we are here. Subscribe and God bless you. Amen and amen. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. And if you have questions, you can also, you know, call the church line. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. With your tongue, thou shalt be sick. With your tongue, thou shalt be well. Matthew chapter. God bless you. Matthew chapter number 12 verse 37. With your tongue, thou shalt be well. And with your tongue, thou shalt be sick. The choice is yours. We'll continue next week. By the grace of Almighty God. To continue on the power, you understand? Learn to speak to your body. Learn to speak to your body. Learn to speak to the tissues of every tissue. To come alive. To be alive by the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead. To be quickened. Speak to your organ to receive strength and begin to function optimally. Hallelujah. God bless you. God keep you. I hope it's been... Yeah, yeah, did you see that? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So you can put it there. By thy words thou shalt be healed, and by thy words thou shalt be well. By thy words thou shalt be strong, by thy words thou shalt be weak. Amen. So the choice is yours. The choice is yours. But I want you to know this. Satan fears somebody Yourself, Satan fears someone who, who knows about words, who has authority. Amen and amen with words. Glory be to God in the highest. Glory, 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 glory be to God in the highest. I will be blessed. Now, let's say uh, on an On an, um, how do I put it? On, 
Friday evening, we are going to be doing our Easter program on Friday evening. Friday evening is our Easter program. Amen. Tied to the, the force of righteousness. The force of righteousness. Don't miss it, please. Friday evening, 7 p.m., same time, Friday, Good Friday. On Saturday, 10 a.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m., in that will be that will be on site. That will be on site. Amen. Even though it's on site, it will still it will still be uh, aired. It will still be aired. Don't miss it. The force of righteousness. You understand? It is the force of righteousness that is making me talk like this. You understand? The force of righteousness will put you in charge. Because why? The righteous is as bold as a lion. The righteous is not timid. The righteous is bold. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise, 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 praise. Praise Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Now let's take our offerings. Just send the QR code. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for ministering life to us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your strength. Thank you, Father. I worship and adore you. I glorify you and I lift you up and I exalt you. Be thou exalted throughout eternity. Be thou exalted, be thou exalted, be thou exalted, be thou exalted. Bible says, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over shall men give as people give today. Lord, thank you because it shall be given back to them in good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. I give you all the glory and praise forever. I worship and adore you, O God. Angels are set loose right now. Angels are set loose right now. Angels are set loose right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels are set loose right now. Angels are set loose right now. To bring our harvest. In Jesus mighty name. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his glorious face to shine upon you. We take authority over every sickness and every disease. The power of sicknesses and diseases are broken over our lives we flew in divine health and we enjoy divine health in the name of jesus christ please 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 do not let your sickness take the steering of your tongue your stand don't let any sickness eh, take over the steering of your your stand of your of your light through your tongue because when sickness begins to drive drive you it will drive you to death too amen let instead let what jesus has done be what you will be talking about focus on jesus focus on jesus night and they looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and not any challenge begin to use the power of jesus to cast that challenge and it will die whether the devil likes it or not. Have a wonderful time. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning by the special grace of God Almighty. Peace be unto you. Amen.